Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the road. Today, we are visiting Saint Joseph, Missouri. Missouri is a place that has come up many times while reading books by one of my favorite authors, Mark Twain. Saint Joseph itself comes up several times in those books. It is really amazing to be visiting the place that seemed so far away back then, almost like something that wasn't real. But here it is. The town seems a bit rough around the edges, but it must not have been too far off from its. Current state back in the days of Mark Twain, even attracting famous outlaws like Jesse James. We are now in Saint Joseph. This is the home of Jesse James's home. Well, speak of the devil. Here's the old Jesse James home. Let's go in and have a look. While this is the original house, it was actually moved here from its original location. Jesse James was shot in this house. He's buried in other part of the state, but this is the home where he was betrayed and shot by a member of his own gang. They have some interesting artifacts on display that belonged to the famous outlaw. It is interesting that for a long time they weren't sure it was actually Jesse James who was killed in the house. Several people over the years even claimed it to be Jesse James. That was all put to rest after they did some genetic testing. He was indeed killed in this house and is buried in Canning, Missouri. Missouri in general just seems to be full of character. It has at times been tumultuous, other times peaceful. I'm sure at the time of its founding, Saint Joseph was very peaceful. Its fortunes have come and gone, and I hope they will come again in time. This is something I have learned from growing up in China. The fate of a place or people is never set in stone. Cities rise, they fall, and given enough time, they rise again. Speaking of peaceful times at the founding of the city, let's pay a visit to the home of the founder himself, Joseph Rabidi. Before Rabidu Row was a row, it was his home. He apparently built other homes onto it, all in a row, giving it the name. It's a museum today, full of artifacts. But its original purpose was to provide shelter for people settling in what is today Joseph. Joseph Rabidu lived here the rest of his life, welcoming newcomers all along. I'm sure. Today, San Joseph is sort of a backwater place, sort of standing apart from the major coming and goes of present-day America. Despite its declining importance, it has plenty of beauty to offer someone looking to take a stroll. Downtown has parks and artworks to brighten up the old brick buildings. And while there are plenty of reminders of the current downtown the city finds itself in, they do a good job of showing what potential this place still holds. Now let's take a step back to what Saint Joseph was right in the center of everything that was happening in America by visiting the old Pony Express headquarters. This place has a lot more than just Pony Express artifacts from a bygone era. There are trains, cars, plants, and even entire city streets set up in here to enjoy.
it's interesting how short-lived the Pony Express actually was, and yet it lives on as an icon of the West. The image of riders rushing between stations in front of dramatic desert backdrops is just as much alive today. And even though there are no people around still to reminisce about those old days, there is still plenty of romance attached to them to inspire the imagination of generations to come. As mentioned, there's an entire city main street set up in here, shops and all, for the curious visitor trying to get a glimpse of how things used to be. Let's have a look and see the ghosts of the past brought back in this exhibit. Move on from the old main street. Let's take a walk through the old ballroom, where pictures of prominent people from the city's past are on display. I wonder if old Jesse James ever set foot in here for entertainment while in hiding. Either way, there's more to see on the upper floors. The next one displays some of the dark times in medicine and mental health. And I have to admit, it was a bit hard going through the place. I'm sure many of the treatments were conjured up in spirit of helping fellow human beings who found themselves in need. But from today's perspective, they have the appearance of medieval remedies. There are some brighter spots along the displays, like those old horrors. I have to say again how hard all of this is to say. I also know that at the time many of those implements were in use. A patient basically had no rights. They were here until some other than themselves determined that they could live. A person could also find themselves in those circumstances at someone else's insistence. I hope the doctors had the presence of mind to determine legitimate cases and to let free the people who did not belong. But I'm afraid there were probably many who fell through the cracks. I also feel terrible for the people who legitimately needed help, but medical knowledge was just a bit too far behind to provide proper treatment. 
I did not want to leave that as the last stop. So now let's make our way over to the university to see the Walter Cronkite Memorial. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but this is an amazing display of the not forgotten newsman's achievements. He was reading the headlines through some of the most critical moments in American history. And they are on display here as a tribute to the most trusted man to sit behind a news desk. He is from here if you were wondering why the display. One of the best parts of this exhibit is the news desk and old broadcast cameras. You can pretend yourself to be in the place of old Walter Cronkite sharing the news with Americans across the country. And that's the way it is. Well, I hope you enjoyed this visit to St. Joseph, Missouri. The city's fortunes may not currently be what they once were, but there are strong foundations here, and given time and effort, things often turn around for a place. Thank you for watching. See you next time.